Star Wars The Force Unleashed had an impressive initial showing with a trailer that piqued the interest of young Padawans. You seemingly would be able to manipulate the Force with your controller and enjoy a story worthy of furthering the Star Wars canon. Has all the promise materialized into an amazing romp through the universe, or is it lost in space? You cannot disguise yourself from me. I'm ready now. Eking out valuable real estate between episodes three and four, Unleashed borrows from each trilogy with some political intrigue, dotting a more Joseph Campbell-esque story of a hero's journey. And that hero is a villain named Starkiller, Darth Vader's secret apprentice. If you destroy him, you'll be one step closer to your destiny. With some plot holes and blatant fan service, the story stays interesting, from the psychology of the surviving Jedi you're sent to wipe out, to the typical droid banter and the binary choice between the light and dark side that's creeping up from the moment you press start. There are definitely some stretches taken with the cannon, but it's an enticing ride. After a rousing tutorial of Wookiee genocide as Darth Vader, you jump into the Nash and Starkiller. What is your will, my master? With a limited set of Sith skills, but more than enough of the force flowing through his veins to lay waste to stormtroopers and mass. The levels are varied and thematic, but sometimes overly so. Areas tend to look the same from beginning to end, and it's easy to get turned in the wrong direction, even with a minimap. Later on, these sites are revisited and remixed, providing little variety across the game's nine missions. The areas are rarely claustrophobic, giving Starkiller room to show off his style, like sizzling foes with lightning or throwing a hapless soldier to his doom. All of the above nets you a variety reward through a rudimentary leveling system based on force points, culled from dispatching enemies and completing certain objectives. You can buy new combo moves, increase stats, or strengthen force abilities. It's pretty limited, but it adds a level of accomplishment. Sadly, major abilities are unlocked by plot progression and not leveling. Despite having all the grandeur of Star Wars at its disposal, the levels can grind on thanks to all the recycled linear locales and enemies. So maybe its incredibly short length of seven or eight hours is for the best. What is thy bidding, my master? With all the force lightning, gripping, pushing, and lightsaber combos, you'd think that the battles would be things of legend, but the combat isn't really challenging with all the big enemies being finished off by now blasé quick time events. The only real power that the masses of troops possess is annoying you with extended life bars that seem oblivious to half your lightsaber swings. What's worse is that later enemies can't be thrown around like ragdolls, the game's biggest charm. It's something we've seen in PsyOps and Half-Life 2, and here it can feel wonky at times. The occasional swell of opponents creates choke points, and these encounters eventually simmer down to monotony. The enemies aren't as scared of star killers as they should be, instead, lining up for the slaughter. Leave no witnesses. The occasional bit of exploration may net a temporary power-up, lightsaber crystal, or some force points, but it's really a small aside. The boss battles offer some neat effects, but the spamming of force abilities will inevitably get you to another quick time event. Fighting eventually becomes a chore. There's a lot of freedom in how to tackle each fray, but there's really no need to utilize it, as the same boring combos always get the job done. It seems that you are about to achieve your primary programming, Master. The ambitions of the young Sith sometimes stretch the capabilities of the Ronin engine, using euphoria for realistic animation and effects, but the engine stutters when you initiate the Ford Splitscreens. There are also numerous crash bugs, clipping issues that will get you stuck on geometry and glitchy boss battles. It's a physics funhouse, but an unpolished one. Sound is the stellar stuff that Lucas is known for, but for all that graphic prowess, some cutscenes hit new levels of the uncanny valley, coupled with texture issues. We also had issues with sound cutting out in cinemas, including the ending. All these problems were found in the final retail version of the game. I should have expected the Emperor would send an assassin. It's a coward's tactic. Your destiny is now your own. Sever all ties to your past. No one must know that you still serve me. 
The Secret Apprentice has a palatable action game, which for a change is strengthened by its license and story. It initially delivers on its promise, but it erodes over time due to the monotony and meager difficulty that discourages exploring the combat's complexity. Long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, things like telekinesis and laser swords were enough, but now games need to back up tech with substance. This is where Star Wars The Force Unleashed turns to the dark side. Now go, and remember that the dark side is always with you.